I've been replaying Final Fantasy IX, one of my favorite games in the series and uh, one of my favorite video games in general. It's been years since I last played it back on the original PlayStation. It's been long enough that I don't remember all the story beats, but so much remains familiar, like the characters and the music. It seemed serendipitous that I would watch a recent video by 8-Bit Music Theory, a channel you should definitely check out if you're into video games and or music theory, uh, to find out it's all about voice leading, specifically citing composer Nobuo Uematsu and the piece Eye to Eye from the Final Fantasy IX score. That is, however serendipitous it is that someone else is thinking about a very popular video game from a 34-year-old franchise. In any case, I had my uke in hand while watching this video because of course I did, and it seemed to fit the instrument beautifully. Rather than just teaching you how to play the song on ukulele, I thought it might be fun to see how I create an arrangement of a song. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is listen. The first thing that jumped out to me is that the notes in the melody fit the range of the ukulele very comfortably. Oftentimes I'll have to transpose a song so that it's easier to play or easier to listen to uh, on this instrument. This is great because I shouldn't need to transpose at all here. The melody starts, I can hear it on the uh, uh, G note, so I can play that on the third fret of the E string, hop up to the seventh fret of the A string where I've got that E note. And later in the song, we're going to jump up to G and A. So that would be the 10th and 12th fret of my A string. That only happens once up there. Uh, so uh, it's not it's not going to be a huge deal um, on, on any of my ukes. I've got at least 12 frets, so I don't have to go too far out of my way to include those. So that's that's kind of my range down here. I've got this this low G to this A up here. So it's going to be one of the first things that I'm looking for is that range of the melody. I'm looking for the lowest note in the melody and the highest note in the melody and see if I can position it uh, in a way that's going to be comfortable, comfortable to play on the ukulele. So I do want to start on that melody first. There's a lot of cool stuff happening in this song, but the melody is arguably the most important part of a song. So once I figure that out, I can build from there. With lots of popular music, we can usually find sheet music for songs we're trying to adapt. Uh, this can speed up the process quite a bit, especially if you're still working on your ear. Um, I found an arrangement uh, and analysis of this song, Eye to Eye, on Muse Score. Uh, now, the user Kiraga747 has done a great job with this transcription, um, but if you've spent any amount of time on the internet, you probably know that there's a range of quality out there, especially when it comes to user-generated content. Even published sheet music can have mistakes or poorly thought out interpretations. Um, that's why even when I'm using a transcription as a reference, I refer to it alongside the original recording whenever possible. Um, even if there aren't mistakes, um, artists might have made different deliberate choices on their arrangements that won't work right for your instrument. Uh, a piano arrangement uh, isn't going to work note for note on the ukulele. 
right, so I've found all the notes in the melody at this point. Uh, so now I'm going to play along with the original track and just make sure I didn't miss anything. All their notes are there. Um, I still need to uh, work out what happens in the uh, intro. I think there's there's lots of really neat chords going on there, so I'll figure something out that that works for uh, the ukulele for that like lush string sound at the beginning. Um, and uh, and I uh, added that little part at the end. It's one of my favorite parts of. Uh, it's very characteristic of a lot of scores in Final Fantasy music. Well, these little uh, arpeggios. Now, all of the, the choices that I've made in terms of where to play all these notes have mostly been um, how to comfortably play the melody on the ukulele all by itself. Once I start adding in harmony, once I start figuring out what all the chords are and where they're going to go in the, in the mix, uh, I might have to change where I play some of those things. I'm erring on the side of using a lot of A string, so I've got these three strings underneath um, that I can use to kind of help to find chord voicings uh, that are gonna help support that melody. Um, but uh, I, I, you know, made my best guesses, but be prepared to change things. I'm constantly saying, oh yeah, yeah, that, that fingering doesn't work. I'm gonna have to use, or I'm gonna have to play this note there. Um, one of the common ones is uh, this C note right here. When I'm playing up here on the seventh fret and eighth fret, and I have to go to a C rather than hop all the way down, back to the third fret, only to come back up here and, you know, do my business over there, um, I am going to use the same C note on the eighth fret of the E string. So it's the same note, just a different place that I can play it. So we're in the key of C. Um, all of our melody notes are, are within uh, the key of C. Uh, we're not breaking out uh, uh, in, in that way. Um, there's definitely some harmony stuff that might show up, but uh, for the bulk of the melody, it's being supported by uh, chords that show up in the key of C. Um, so like right at the beginning, this is one of my favorite uh, bits. We've got a, a C chord uh, happening there. Uh, you know, the, the strings supporting the melody are, are uh, building a C chord. Uh, and as you may know, um, our open strings, our G string, C string, and E string uh, make up a C chord. So I can just play those open strings underneath uh, those notes in uh, the first two measures of this piece. So... So that's pretty nice. That's that sounds good. Maybe I want to change it a little bit later on. Like there are two. It's two measures of C, and maybe I want to try and build something uh, in there. But for right now, I'm 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 cool with that. That sounds nice. There's some stuff happening uh, in the bass or in those in those really low. Uh, low strings um, where uh, there's some melodic movement happening in there. If you watch 8-bit uh, music theories uh, video, um, uh, they talk about that um, 
being an integral part in connecting the chords. Uh, so, I, you know, I've got my low G ukulele here, so I might want to try and play around with, uh, you know, uh, fig figuring out how to incorporate some of those bass lines. Um, but I might want to save it for another instrument. Maybe I want to write a guitar part um, or even a bass part to accompany this um, and, you know, have it for a couple different instruments. But for now, we're just going to keep things simple, chords and melody, and see how well we can integrate them. All right, so the, the next measure kind of uh, leans into an F chord. So I've got... Whoops, okay, so my pickup note... And then this chord here, an E minor. Now the note that uh, I land on uh, in the melody is a G note, uh, which is in the uh, E minor chord. Um, but because of that, because this is the note that I land on in the melody, um, I don't want to strum the note above that, this B note. Like if I was to play this, this uh, shape of, of E minor, then the last note that my ear hears is this B note. And if I'm playing that, um, I might mistake that uh, for the melody, or a listener might mistake that as being part of the melody. You know, it sounds like Sounds like that's the melody as opposed to. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that the last note that I'm strumming, the, the last note that I pluck is that melody note. That's the, that's what I want the uh, most recent thing in your ear to be. So I'm just not going to strum that A string. I'm just going to stop my strum on the melody note. We go back to an F chord, and then a C chord. Uh, an A is in the melody, so I'm playing a C6 here, actually. Oops. Okay, when I get here, um, I want to think about the position of my fingers. So I can be writing down fret numbers, as you'll see in the tab, um, but I also want to consider what fingers I'm using to get there. So, uh, for instance, you know, I'm down here on this F chord shape as I'm playing through. Here, this C6 right there, I can use that as an opportunity to reposition my hand and put my pinky finger on the third frets. That way I'm kind of set up to go to this higher note over here. Now that might not be something that's uh, uh, very intuitive right away, um, but you'll, you'll probably figure it out if you're like, oh, wait a second, this is kind of hard to play. Is there an easier way to do it? Sometimes we can change where we play a note and sometimes we just have to uh, be more considerate about what fingers we're using. Okay, then we go into a D minor chord uh, with this next part. Let's see, it's a D minor 7, because we've got to get that C note in there. Okay, so here's the melody. So we're going from a D minor, uh, or D minor 7, um, into uh, a G chord, right? So that's, that's the path we need to take, and this is where I've got the melody written. Like that. So I need to figure that out. So obviously I don't want to play this D minor way down here. So um, I need to make sure that I'm using uh, another shape that I'm familiar with. Um, so uh, this right here would be a D minor chord, seventh fret of the G string, fifth fret of the rest of the strings. It's a little bar chord there. So I'm tempted to just leave out the G string altogether so I don't have to worry about uh, this finger being taken up. I can just use these top three strings. And then I can worry about getting into my G however I want to do it. I might play it like that. But I want to pause on that D minor for a second before we get to the G, uh, because when I get to spots like this, it's when I'm thinking, oh, do I want to use the high G or the low G? This high G can be 
uh, a, a great asset uh, when you're coming up with melodies like this. Check this out. If I'm using my high G, I can hold uh, all my strings down on the fifth fret and I can play the fifth fret of the G string and that's that C note in the melody. That's that's pretty that's pretty spiffy. Ooh, yeah, tuning is not as spiffy, but that's one of the little advantages that we could get out of uh, uh, a uh, high G uh, ukulele that I can't get out of my low G. So um, I uh, I have some choices to make. So uh, then we move into uh, a G chord, uh, and again, because I'm because I'm up here and I'm looking ahead to the next measure where I'm going to have to go uh, up even farther, I probably don't want to play a G this G shape down here. I probably want to keep my hand up here and ready to climb up to that up to that tenth fret, which is happening very shortly. So. Um, thinking about that that D minor uh, into that G. So like that. So my melody note is a D note on the fifth fret of the A string. So I'm uh, probably going to just play the seventh fret of my C and E strings. Throw in the uh, open G for good measure. And I have myself a G chord there that's going to work just fine. But now I'm transitioning into this E minor that's coming up next. Uh, and that note occurs, that melody note occurs on the 10th fret of the, uh, of the A string. So I could use this uh, chord shape. So I'm playing a bar chord version of uh, E minor here. I'll get some bar with my pointer finger situated on the 7th fret and uh, I'm playing the ninth fret of the G string. And then I'm throwing my pinky on the 10th fret of the A string up on top. It's a little, little tricky. We could do the same thing that we did before with the D and just omit the, uh, the G string from that little chord and just play like that. That's totally fine. And we can reach up. I would just stretch my pinky up to play the 12th fret for that A and then come back down. Now next we've got uh, an interesting little series of, of notes. The, the chords move pretty quickly through here. We've got an A uh, to a B diminished to a C chord. Um, and that's all happening pretty quickly there. And here's the melody that's being played. So we've got 10, 8, 8, 7. Okay. And then we, and then we'll we'll descend a little bit more from there. So I want to think about how I'm going to play an A chord here, and with the G on top of it, it's going to make this A seven chord. So I'll probably use this right here, doing some chords high up on the on the instrument here. Um, so I'm barring the ninth fret and adding my middle finger on the tenth fret of the A string. Now, um, I might be using some of these busy chords, but I also might want to pare it down. Um, as we saw before, we don't have to be playing all four strings all the time. Um, so maybe uh, on, a, on a part like this, I want to just stick to two uh, notes uh, together. So uh, pairs of notes. Something like that. But I'll want to like play around with that a little bit. And see and see what I can find. Also, uh, moving to those other notes. So I'm playing this A7 chord right here, but I've also got to get to this F note uh, for the melody. And this voicing isn't gonna make that a very comfortable thing. So maybe I do want to limit uh, what notes I'm playing. That's that's feeling really comfortable for the B diminished to the C at least. So I'm doing B diminished up here from the G string to the A string, I've got seven, eight, seven, eight happening. So I can capture that uh, uh, melody note on the eighth fret of the A string. And then I can shift into 
this shape of C, where I'm barring the seventh fret, and I've got my middle finger on the uh, eighth fret of the E string for that C note. And of course, my ring finger is on the ninth fret of the G. If I want to use that, again, we could easily omit the G from that little, that little business there. And that honestly might be what I'll do to uh, make that passage work. Um, again, we don't need to have chords all the time. Um, we could have that um, F note transition between uh, the A and the B diminished chords uh, be something that doesn't have uh, a harmony attached to it. I accidentally hit an open string there. Didn't sound bad. Something like that, maybe. Um, moving on to the next measure, uh, we've got D minor again to an A minor. Now that's happening pretty quickly there. Uh, a lot of that's happening underneath. Um, on a solo arrangement, that might be the kind of thing that I uh, don't worry about. I don't worry about that transition from the D minor to an A note there, or to an A chord there, A minor. That might be one that I just leave all by itself. Next up, I'm going to the B diminished again with an F note on top. Uh, I've got a pair of eighth notes coming down, um, I would uh, be inclined to not have harmony underneath that as well. I'm just inclined to just let that melody sit by itself as we move down to our C chord um, at, the, at the end here. So we start off with a C, then I have F, and then A minor, and it kind of resolves to C. And then uh, at the very end there, we have those um, uh, little arpeggios, uh, and those are just spelling out different chords. So the first one is just spelling out a C chord, and then we spell out a G chord. I'm spelling that C chord uh, like so. If I was uh, playing on my high G, obviously this wouldn't be the right C note. Uh, so I would need to play that a little bit differently, which I could certainly do. Um, so I would just have to uh, uh, play those three open notes for that C, E, G. I've got my C up there, and then I can just play a G chord shape there. Um, for the F, I'm inclined to use the open uh, F chord shape. I'm not playing the G string at all, so I don't need to worry about holding that down. So I can just worry about grabbing the next chord, which is another G. But this time we're playing with D on top down to a B and a G there. And we just repeat that again. Now, I'm inclined for the most part to leave that as it is. I might strum the chord at first because I've got like a couple beats of rest. Um, in the melody, the, uh, the, the uh, strings are playing the chords uh, uh, on, on the first beats of those measures and filling up that space. Uh, once again, this is a different instrument. Uh, right now, we're not thinking about having um, uh, an ensemble. We're just thinking about how can we make it work on this instrument. So I might do like a chord, maybe for that C, I'll just strum the C chord and then, you know, kind of fill in, fill in some of that space with with some gentle strumming, whatever might whatever might work for you. Um, you might have a style that works really well, something that you're you're fond of doing on on the instrument um, to fill in some of that space if you want to. I think it also sounds really nice just um, with a little bit of emptiness around it. Same deal with that F. Maybe I'll strum the F chord. to the G, something like that. So I'm gonna play around with it a little bit and um, 
and see what I can come up with. Uh, what I what I end up with will, will be uh, um, available as as a PDF. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm also going to give you just the melody in the tablature that I wrote out all by itself. So if you want to kind of uh, uh, take a swing at it without hearing or seeing what I did uh, with the arrangement, it could be it could be a really fun exercise. I'll throw the uh, chord names uh, above the uh, staff so you uh, you know have a little bit of direction there uh, and uh, and fill it in uh, any way that you'd like. One, two, three. So this was a little different. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little this little journey, uh, kind of a, a, a quick uh, a quick little workshop on uh, creating arrangements on the ukulele. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to shoot me an email at tinyvillagemusic at gmail.com. I love talking about this stuff. If you're finding this out in the wilds of YouTube and you're like, hey, uh, I wish there was some way that I could uh, get notifications about these videos and maybe some extra PDFs or materials uh, by email every week, well, have I got a deal for you. For the low, low price of absolutely nothing, you can go down into the description and uh, sign up for my mailing list. Uh, you'll get uh, an email every Friday, uh, with usually with a video link and uh, any materials that you might need for uh, these little lessons. So come and join the fun. Thanks y'all so much. I will see you in the next one.